Oh my god. Probably one of the best tri trips of my life. Could you buy a $500,000? Are you kidding? The guy would have sold me into sex slavery. <laughs> Speaking of, we're going to get to that later in the podcast. I feel like every single job has its negative side. Whether you're working at a car dealership or at a McDonald's, you know? If the negative side of my job is that I have to fend my boss's cock out of my face. And I get to meet, like, celebrities. I guess that's just, like, a New Jersey thing. I guess, dude. <laughs> Maybe it's just a me. <laughs> if you're watching this, thank you for watching. Please shoot a like and a sub. And I love you guys. You have no idea. Shit. Are we live? We are live. Welcome back to the No Vaseline Podcast. We are here with your host today, Aiden Duresta. We are back for the No Vaseline Comeback. We are here with the one and only... Corbin Trimble. The kindest man in all of Bloomington, Indiana. We're sitting here in uh, the dorm room about to shoot, you know, the podcast. And yeah, let me just get right back into it. So uh, I just got back from L.A. If anybody has me on Snapchat or Instagram, I'm sure you fucking are tired of seeing videos and stuff from it. <laughs> He's over it. But I got a bunch of really good stories from there, and I'm just going to get right back in, right into it. So what me and my friend were doing, do you know? You ever, ever tell you about my friend Chris? No. He's the partner on my uh, NFT project called The oh, Color okay. Arc, okay. and me and him grew up together, best friends. You guys, if you go on my Instagram, you'll see him. So me and Chris decided we were going to go to this NFT LA thing to go try to make some connections, you know, do this. But the problem was that we did not have a ticket to the event. So of course we, you didn't. Yeah, because, you know, who buys tickets to events anymore? <laughs> you know, it's so, it's so 2020, you know, like before COVID and stuff. Yeah. But so we didn't have a ticket. So we literally just flew there. And I'm just going to tell you a bunch of stories, you know, that turned out what happened. Awesome. So the first story I'm going to tell is on the way to the airport. It's like five in the morning. You know, I've been up all night. How like, early was your flight? It was like a 7 a.m. flight. When did you leave here? You left from here, didn't you? Yeah, and it's like an hour drive from here to the airport. So it was like 4 a.m. when I left here. Dude, fuck that. I was up all night, you know, hanging out with everybody, fucking zonked. Packed probably like 10 minutes before my car got here. I get in. I'm going through the airport, and usually, like, I go through this airport, you know, we're in Indianapolis. So, like, weed and stuff is not legal here, you know, in case you're my friend from New Jersey, and we are, we're lucky enough to have illegal weed. <laughs> but weed is not legal there. And I was, of course, like an idiot bringing weed to Cali, like, the one place that it's illegal. Yeah, <laughs> yeah like, I wasn't going to go buy it there, which I got stories about right. that later in the podcast. So I'm going through the airport. I got probably about like a half ounce on me or like an ounce. And I also have 10 grams of shrooms. In the, going through TSA? Yeah. Anybody who's watching this who doesn't know me, I quit drinking. 19 days sober. Yeah, yeah. But I do do a lot of mushrooms. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, weed and stuff. So yeah. I had to bring my uh, medicinal mushrooms with me. Of course, I've left my medicinal mushroom card at home. Right. And we're walking through the airport. I get through the security, or I'm about, and all of a sudden now there's a dog. Like, we're like we're already through. I'm like, what the fuck? I'm kind of shitting myself, you know. Wait, you didn't know they had dogs there? I didn't know, like, I've gone through this airport a bunch of times. Like, I never saw a dog. Really? What, are there, like, normally dogs there? I, every time I've been through there, there's a dog. No shit. I guess maybe I, I, ne I, guess maybe I never had shrooms on me or, like, enough <laughs> things to worry. But I was, like, kind of shitting myself. They make me go through the line again, like another line Wait, with just another you? dog. Yes, not just me. No, like oh, a group okay, of people, okay, okay. like a random group yeah. of people. They were like, "All right, you guys are going again." Like, I'm gonna pull up the videos. There should be three different videos that get pulled up on this podcast of three different dogs that I saw. Wait, three? One of them was the first one. They made me go through it a second time, and then a third one was just like right chilling right oh, before you okay. walked into gotcha. the gate. To me, him definitely made eye contact. <laughs> This dog was, you know, it was a fucking brown dog. It was a sexy dog. I'll do, I'm not going to talk shit about the dog, but... I think those are for bombs, though, right? Like, the the dogs aren't really for uh, weed and shit, I don't think. Yeah, fucking, what am I, a scientist? I don't know, fucking... I don't think they are. I think they're mostly for bombs, like, because TSA was a whole 9-11 deal. Like, that's how... 9-11, what's that? The whole 9-11 deal. Yeah. Cut, to, cut to an explanation of the 9-11 deal. All right. So after that, you know, I ended up getting in, whatever. 
flew there, you know, I guess they were looking for bombs. Thank God my plane fucking didn't get bombed, you know. Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I touch down. We end up, me and my friend Chris, my, Chris, my friend Chris flies in from New Jersey and I fly in from Indiana. We do not have a place to stay. I was hoping, you know, that maybe a magical fairy would like email me like, you know, hotel tickets that I wouldn't have to pay you, for. But you flew out there without a ticket and no place to stay. Yeah, no ticket to the event and no place to stay. That's called having a dream. Yeah, that's that's a real like... Good shit. So last you second, work. yeah, last, I like to see. yeah, last second, we ended up getting a hotel at this thing called the Wayfair. Amazing hotel, amazing hotel people. I recommend it if you know you're ever trying to be sad for three days. No, I'm just kidding. Good hotel, good people. <laughs> but uh, so we get to the hotel. You know, we touch down. We instantly roll up, go get some food, and we're like, you know, let's go check out this convention center. You know, see the NFTLA is the event that we're supposed to go to, and let's go sneak in. You know, and I'm like, uh, the entire time, I'm like, Chris, like, we're going to be able to sneak in. And Chris is like, Duresta, like, I just flew out to L.A. for nothing. Like, you're like, this is horrible. We go, we get in through like a mail room, like a back mail room. I'm like walking around, like acting like we're knowing things. We're walking around an empty convention center for like 15 minutes. Like, you ever been in like an empty like place? Like, no. Like fucking like huge. Like, like you could hear your echo on the other side of the fucking room, you know, like empty chairs. And we're like, we're thinking like, it's like a ghost town, you know, like an empty, yeah. you ever see those TikToks of like an abandoned mall or something? Yeah. It's like that. Damn. Because nothing's set up on this side. All of a sudden, a dude in a uniform, you know, is on the other side of this, like, 500,000 square foot thing. And we, like, walk right by each other, you know? Like, like we both just give each other, you know, like, the little goon nod. We're probably, like, 10 feet apart when the guy turns and goes, wait a second. You two aren't supposed to be here. He goes, hey, like, are you guys supposed to be here? And I go, yeah, I'm looking for my dad. And the guy's like, who's your dad? And right here is where I completely fumbled the bag. Remember, I've been in L.A. for like less than an hour, less than 60 minutes I've been there. We are in the convention center, and this guy goes, who's your dad? Straight-faced, I just go, Joe DiMaggio. This guy is looking at me with fo- <laughs> like like a deer in the fucking headlights, and I'm like, dude, I'm just screwing with you. I go, my dad's name is Joe DiResta. I go, he's the male guy. You know, I just made a bunch of bullshit up. The guy's like... He should be brought that way. Me and my friend, as soon as we turned the corner, we ran. Oh, that? He he did, he completely bought it. Completely bought it. Imagine that my entire trip was ruined. That right then and there. I don't want to imagine that, bro. Yeah, well, it was like it was a good trip. It does sound like you know what? So whatever. So then we ended up sneaking in to the actual event. We see a bunch of people in the wrong place with us. We're like, oh yeah, like let's help you get there. We go. To, like, an entrance where they're bringing in cars to, like, unload, like, heavy, like, things, you know, for the event. Yeah. Me and my friend, I just go, follow my lead. Walk in, acting like I'm on the phone. Just walk past all these guys. They're all in, like, construction outfits, like, you know, like, union workers. Walk past all of them. One of them's like, hey, what are you doing? I'm like, hey, my dad, Joe. I'm like, he's this way. They're like, ah. We get in. Now me and Chris are in this event for free. And this is the first day of the event, you know, early. So everybody's setting up their booths. And right now, me and Chris, you know, we took, you know, we thought a lot about what we were actually going to be doing at this event, you know, which fucking all you guys are probably wondering. You know, we were going to promote a project that we were working on, and, you know, we kind of took a step back to take a step forward. We decided we were just going to go to this event to, number one, learn a shit ton from everybody, you know, who's there. Because anybody who's paying to go to this event knows what the fuck they're doing. Yeah. And number two, to make the best, the right connections, which if you're listening to this podcast, connections that we made beyond galore that we could never have imagined. And then number three, to have a fucking good time. Oh, and yeah. oh my God, probably one of the best tri- trips of my life, weeks of my life, whatever. That's what winging it gets you, bro. That is what winging it is. So we get into the event and we just go up to every single person, introduce ourselves, you know. We say that we are just down to help anybody. We're here to help anybody for free, whatever they need. Instantly, start getting put to work. You know, fucking one guy's like, can you help us tape this up? You know, because they're all setting up their booths for this event, you know? This is before all, like, the people walking around are coming. So it's just the setup day. 
We're helping set up this one guy who's, who's, his project is Pretty Girls in Fruit. We call it the Pussy Fruit. <laughs> like, we'll, we'll pull up a picture right here. We'll pull up a picture right now if you could get one up. Uh, the, we got two. Shout out to my two fucking guys that none of this would be happening without. I don't know if they want me to out their names. You want me to out your name? I'll just do a first name? No? What about your name? I'm allowed to out you. Shout out to fucking Seth and Gianni. They're making sure that the fucking cameras are good, that all this shit has been ready. They've been fucking helping me out forever. Whatever. Besides that, picture of Pussy Fruit Guy and us. You know, maybe a couple pictures. So, uh, so we start helping this guy, you know, the Pussy Fruit Guy, you know. Amazing. This guy's telling us how he's from uh, Spain and how he flew all the way here to sell pussy and fruit. You know, he's a, he's a good business. He's a good business guy. You know, everybody loves pussies and fruits. Okay. Uh, another guy comes up to me. He has signed pictures from Stanley. Some of the most beautiful art that I've ever seen. You from see that? Stan Lee? Stan yeah, Lee. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I did see that. I saw that on your story. This dude, so this dude ha- asked me, he's like, can you move these paintings for me? I'm like, yeah. I'm moving them from the back of the car with, you know, m- this guy's wife who's like, you know, has no idea what's going on, you know. She's just helping her husband. He goes, oh yeah, no pressure. That painting is worth $500,000. Don't mess it up. Holy shit. I'll tell you, I've never moved something like this. I'm, like, it was probably like a 15, 25 feet move that I had to do. Probably took me fucking 20 minutes. Yeah. I did not want to buy, have to buy a $500,000 painting. Could you... Could you buy a five hundred thousand dollars? Are you kidding? The guy would have sold me in a sex slavery. <laughs> Speaking of, we're gonna get to that later in the podcast. Awesome. So that was amazing. And then uh, this other cat, you know, a uh, bold cat. He's wearing a uh, neon shoes, neon shirt, running around Boston, everybody around. You know, kind of. You know, I was like, I need to meet this guy. Go up to this guy. I'm like, I'm gonna help you. Turns out this guy is helping produce all this stuff. Long story short, helped this guy for the next couple of days. This guy loved my energy, everything. This guy ends up hiring me to be his personal assistant. Learned a lot through this guy. You know, the guy is a little fruity. You know, he's bisexual. He has a kid, but he also has an ex-husband, you know? <laughs> Shit. I, you know, it's, it's a little, you know, it's a little into it, you know? And the guy is really trying to help me out. So I ended up working for him for a lot. Of the event, you know, making connections through him, going up to people, hi, you know, asking them what their deal is, hi, my, I'm sir, this guy's a knight, he's knighted in Denmark and Germany, don't fucking ask me why, whatever, I just hope I don't get sold into sex labor, (laughs) but whatever, you know, that was something good that happened, and I'll get a little bit more into that guy, and you know, the type of things that this guy really helped me into. And, you know, I got to meet a bunch of speakers, you know, they had amazing speakers at this event. A lot of people, shout out Crypto Stash, uh, shout out, you know, Charlie Sheen, shout out Mark Cuban, got to meet all these guys, you know, all of them got to talk to me, pull up, I'm going to pull up a bunch of pictures with Mark Cuban, you know, I got to email Mark Cuban a couple weeks ago about some stupid bullshit out here in Indiana, he got to start out here by opening up a bar. And I had an idea for doing something similar, so he responded, and when I saw him there, I was like, you know, I snuck backstage, obviously, and all of them are like in the middle of talking to him, and as soon as I got a second, I go, hey, Mark, I was, I emailed you the other day, or I go, I go, hey, Mark, I'm a freshman at Indiana University, I emailed you the other day, it meant the world to me that you responded. He bullshitted with me for five minutes, and then came and said, let's take a picture. He asked you. Nicest guy in the world. He was like, let's take a picture, you know, because he knew I wanted one. He's just that famous, man. Huh? Yeah, Mark Cuban got to meet me. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, that was good. You know, Charlie Sheen, you know, seemed so uninterested. He seemed like he had no idea what an NFT was. And I bet you they paid him like $100,000 for like five <laughs> minutes of speaking, you know. Yeah. But he was funny, you know. I got, I told him, I was like, you know, he's a funny guy. He was probably high. <laughs> probably. Hopefully. You know, oh, I got to, speaking of high, I got to go to fucking dispensaries for the first time, legally. You know, I got to, you know, get stizzies and weed. I went back a couple times. I spent too much money. God damn. I probably spent $500 in like a three, four day vacation. Is there something wrong with me or what? I don't think so. <laughs> yeah, I know. But, uh, you know, all of us have our own vices. I don't drink. Speaking of in California, everybody is goddamn smoking everywhere. True story. Me and my friend left the event the first day. We're about to go get food. Walking back to our hotel to go smoke. Found a blunt in a bush. 
a two gram blunt in a bush. Just found it. Found it, and of course I smoked it. Well, naturally, as one does. That's just like what it's like in Cali. Another time at the convention center, I I saw an eighth just sitting there on the floor from a dispensary. Like I didn't want to pick it up and get kicked out of the event for stealing some guy's eighth. You know. <laughs> Meanwhile, I'm already sneaking in. Uh, meanwhile, then we stole VIP tickets. Oh my god, it got crazy. We ended up stealing VIP tickets, and then the late, oh my god, we ended up getting. I ended up getting kicked out of the event later too. So uh, the first night, so the first day I'm there, we found a bag of VIP wristbands, uh, and I picked them up. We started walking around with them, and I also picked up a volunteer thing. So it kind of didn't make sense that I had a volunteer thing and a VIP one yeah. thing, but I'll tell you. Every single person with a VIP wristband gave us the time of day. All these people must have spent at least $5,000 each on yeah. these VIP wristbands. And me and my friend are walking around for free. You know, like a couple yeah. times security tried to stop us. And I go, fuck, I go, I'm VIP, cocksucker. You know? Like the guy couldn't do anything. Damn. Fucking. And that got us into the VIP parties, <laughs> which don't even get me started. The first night there was a VIP party. We got to go to this thing. It was called the Wisdom. Just a dome. Like, imagine, like, a circle, like, above you. And they got the saxophone player of Pink Floyd to come. And it's just, like, they put, like, the galaxy around you. It's so hard to explain. Oh, shit. Yeah, I saw that on your story, too. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Put a, I'm going to pull up the fucking video right now. And you'll hear, like, they just were playing Pink Floyd music. Everybody was either high on acid or drunk or high on shrooms. Like, you're, I'm running around trying to, like, leverage connections and stuff. And meanwhile, I was high on shrooms too. Trying to leverage connections. And you see guys, like, you can't even talk to these guys. You can't have a conversation with them. But, like, you go, do you want to tap this blunt? And they're like, oh. You know, because that's, like, all that's on their mind, yeah. you know? Right. But some of the best connections I ever made there, really, truly. You're talking about, you know, having a good time. This was the one of the craziest times I had. The next night, uh, the VIP party was Steve Aoki. Pull up some uh, Steve Aoki videos. He was playing unreleased music. He brought out a really talented guy named JJ from Korea who got to sing some unreleased music. Pull up the picture. Uh, I got to meet him with my friend Chris for a minute. Coolest ever. Shout out to the security guard who was cool enough to let us do that. That guy was an asshole. Not an asshole. He was could have been an asshole to everybody else. The guy sat there and talked to us for a while and was just the nicest. You know. Shout out to that guy. Very shout out to that guy. Uh, we got into a phase party one night. You know, some guys shoot us an address. They were like, I love that you guys sneak into shit. They were like, here's the address to a phase party. I better see you there. Fucking got to go to a phase like party. Shit. Like YouTube phase? Yeah. Holy I got shit. to meet some of the guys who we watched growing up, you know? Yeah. Got some of the best advice from uh, a really good, fr you know, another guy who's a cameraman for phase. Shout out to you if you're watching. You gave me a lot of really good advice on TikTok. Whatever. Bullshit. Uh, you posting TikToks now? Yeah. Follow me on TikTok, Deresta69. They just banned me for a week. Oh, they just did, like just, today. Like, didn't you just make that TikTok? I just started making TikToks two days ago. I just got my first viral TikTok of the shroom thing in the airport. I'll pull that TikTok up now, maybe. You know, you'll get to see it. Should go follow it. And then fucking they banned me because I think I posted a, a TikTok of my friend naked. It was like a naked mile that he did back home. You guys ever do that? I never did. Did you guys for football? Like it, like we were whenever we did parties and stuff. When I used to drink, we like two weeks ago. We used to if you don't hit a cup in beer pong, you have to run a naked mile. Like no matter what. You never did that. Uh uh. What? <laughs> I guess that's just like a New Jersey thing. I guess, dude. <laughs> Maybe it's just a retard thing. <laughs> Uh, another thing that happened, we got invited, so our last day there, we were flying out that night, so we weren't able to come to this after party, so we got invited to the pre-after party at the James Goldstein house, P I'm gonna pull, pull up the Wikipedia of this house, this house is a goddamn Wikipedia page about it, imagine that, it's a house that's also a club, oh my god, I met the hottest girls I've ever met in my life there, Damn. two models that each had like, eight, ten million followers on Instagram, Damn. And I'm sitting there, and the guy who took me there was my new boss. And, you know, he's sitting there. He's like, you're not allowed to say hi to these girls. You know, they're working. 
So I walk by with just like the biggest goofy smile on my face, like, uh, you know, like making sure they know me and stuff. So that like, you know, when I see them, they're going to be like, hey, you were that kid with the noodle body who we didn't like. Hey, stop interrupting. You got in our shot. You got rid of him, you know. Uh, but this guy, fucking back to my boss. So he's a bisexual <laughs> knight. He runs a global fashion company and he throws events all over the world. I'm going to pull up the text that this guy sent to me and stuff. So, you know, I'm trying to be cordial. I'm trying to be proactive. You know, if you ever have a boss, you want to be proactive. This is me and my boss's text. We're going to pull up the screenshot on here. <laughs> Seth, bleep out his I got you. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> He goes, no, you're going to read my boss's part, and I'm going to read mine. You go, start out. Start here? Uh, above the blue. Okay, how are you? I'm doing good. I'm on my way to the gym. Hot stud. Get that body pumped up so we can pull can we, we can pull chicks together on our tables and have three ways around the globe. He goes, hot stud. Hot get stud. that body pumped up so we can pull chicks together on our travels and have three ways around the globe. I had no idea how to respond to this because I... He's my boss and stuff. I do not want to have to suck his dick. And I responded like, ha ha. And then he went, I'm serious. Oh, you did the ha ha before he responded. Yeah, I did the ha ha before he responded. So I've really been thinking about this deeply. And I, when I when this text and me and my friends were at the gym and we were talking, I feel like every single job has its negative side. Whether you're working at a car dealership or at a McDonald's, you know. If the negative side of my job is that I have to fend my boss's cock out of my face and I get to meet like celebrities and they're flying me out to France in May for like an event. It's fucking nuts. Do you guys think I'm going to come back? <laughs> no, I this, don't. I like, I really want to go. <laughs> this is true story. Like an aneurysm, dude. Uh, they're taking me out to France in May and I don't know if I'm going to come back. Johnny's doing fucking yoga on the floor right now, dying laughing. God damn, man. Oh, shit. So, I don't know. He taught me a lot and stuff. But he always, like, kisses me. And, like, (laughs) I'm not homophobic. Like, like, he grabs my leg like that, but I'm not homophobic. That's uncomfortable. That's my fag test. You see, he just failed. I grab guys' legs like that, and if they don't say anything... And he then they say something after. That's how I know. If they weren't, they would grab my hand immediately and throw it off. No, that's just not true. But I love gays. I would love them so much that I would fuck them. <laughs> this isn't any. I love my gays. <laughs> my editor is gay over here. My boss oh, is a bisexual shit. man. Is this gonna come back to bite me? No, I don't think so. It might. <laughs> it might. Can't wait till t- ten years from now. And, you know, I love my gays. God. So, uh... <laughs> you get fucking canceled. <laughs> Speaking of, off of my gay boss. <laughs> you know, he tried... You know, he never made any moves on me or anything, but I think he will. But the good thing is that I'm sober. But the bad thing is that he could drug... Like, I won't get in any compromising situations. The bad thing is what? Like, my mom told me, like, as soon as I told her I had these jobs and stuff, I was like, yo, like... She was like, watch out for pedophiles. She was, I was like, what? Like another guy who's a, an artist. He invited me and my friend to come out and stay with him for a week. Just to go out there and be creative. He just invites creatives to his gallery. He has a nice place to stay. And my dad was like, is this guy trying to fuck you? <laughs> I was like, no. I mean, he just likes me because I'm creative, dad. And then I was like, oh my god, I sound delusional. I was like, I sound like a high school girl big dang banging a college guy. Do you guys think I'm going to come back from France with a dick in my mouth? (laughs) Alright, anyway. What are the other things? Yeah, I hope not to. But it's college. That's what this stuff's about. So, uh... That's what it's about. Yo, speaking of, so, uh... I'll I'll tell a story. This is a little bit bit off topic. One time we're hanging out in here and, uh... Gee... What's up? Uh, Somebody just opened the door, of course, while we're in the middle of a podcast. Come on, G. Uh, so, so the bisexual, so the bisexual girl comes in one day and we're all hanging out and, you know, we're just talking and stuff and we're in the middle of a conversation for five minutes, all good, you know, and all of a sudden, I guess I said something. She goes, did you just say a slur? And everyone in the room isn't like me, you know, they're all like afraid. (laughs) So, so I'm like, oh my God, I'm so sorry. Like, like I, and I don't like saying slurs and stuff. It's not like my thing, 
to like go out and slur people, that's, you know. That's good. Yeah, it's a good it's a good trait not to slur. Right. And I'm like, oh my god, what did I say? And she's like, No, I thought you said an F word. And everyone's like, Oh, like good, like good. Aiden got out of it. And I go, Oh, fag? Everybody went like oh, fucking shit. jaws to the floor and she went like this. I go, I go, I don't, I go, I don't mean fag as in gay person. I go, I mean fag as in someone who's like annoying, you know? Like when I say fag, for the future, this is forever, you know? Hope that this does not come back to bite me also. It's not talking about gay people, but I don't mean gay people. I mean people who are trying to just be annoying. And if they're trying to fuck me, maybe it's a little weird. But one of the final things that I did on this trip was go and hang out with my uncle. One of the funniest guys alive, and uh, my uncle has been in a bunch of movies, you know, now he lives in an area where there's gang graffiti on his mailbox, you know, he's been up and he's been down, you know, he's a funny guy, I stole that joke from him, but uh, one of the things that oh, that we did, he was telling me stories, was there anybody familiar with Howard Stern? My favorite comedian of all time. You know, if you're watching this in 10 years and I'm famous and I'm a good comedian or anything, go watch Howard Stern, the greatest man of all time, whatever. Hmm. My uncle had the very, the amazing opportunity of being able to go on the Howard Stern show. And Howard Stern loved my uncle so much that he invited him on a second time, you know? And it, it's in the middle of the commercial break. Howard Stern goes to my uncle. He goes, "Hey, we got ten stripper. We got ten strippers outside that think that they should be dating millionaires. Do you want to rate them?" And my uncle's like, "I would love to," you know. And the, and, my, and Howard's like, you know, tell a story or something. So my uncle starts telling a story about how my cousins, you know, who are now in their twenty, like older twenties, he had a cat for them, and like. Like, him and his wife, like, went out and bought a cat, you know, and Nick bought cats because they loved Howard and Beth so much. How, Beth is Howard's wife. He goes, we named them Howard and Beth Stern, Doresta, the cats. And Howard's like, oh, my God, that's amazing, you know. Uh, how are the cats, you know. And John just goes, I have fucking no idea. He goes, I took them and I put them in a brown paper bag, went in the middle of Central Park and, and let them out. And Howard Stern started crying. And Howard Stern's dying. He's like, why'd you do? And he goes, what'd you tell your kids? And he goes, I went and told my kids it was their fault that they left the door open, that it was their fault that the cats ran away and that they should take better care of their things. And Howard Stern is crying, laughing. And Howard's like, when are we going back on air? And if you know Howard Stern, Gary, like what you guys are to me right now, he goes, that all was on air. So my uncle just told me that story and just gave me the CD. So we should, we're going to listen to that later. But my uncle is one of the funniest men alive. Got to smoke uh, a bunch of blunts there because they, and then my cousin drove me to the airport. So my uncle posted something very funny. My uncle posted that uh, the blunt things were my business cards. And we'll pull that up right now to close this shit out. But uh, fuck, that's funny. You know, fucking go follow Corbin. Corbin, you want to plug yourself? Uh, I don't even know. What I don't have anything to plug. Okay. Whatever. Follow No Vaseline Podcast on all fucking social medias. Instagram, Tickamatok, uh, YouTube. Please follow me, Aiden Deresta. Uh, we got a NFT project up and coming that you know we're gonna be talking a lot more about. Me and my partner, the Haitian Prince Christian Larose. Go check that out. And yeah, besides that, you know, we're going to do merch coming soon. No Vass Holes and No Vass Fitness. And yeah, that's it. If you're one of the first people watching this, please comment the code word Harry so that I know it was you and that I know I have to thank you back in the future. Love you guys. Catch you on the next one. Bow, bow, bow. Peace. Wait, wait, wait. Did you stop? Did you stop? I got to hit a little freestyle then. Bitches on my nuts. Undercover. Luba is on me. No lover. Podcast number one, like Donald Glover. Ooh. Ooh. That was nasty. That was my freestyle. All right, sub to the podcast. Peace. Catch you fools on the flip. Bow, bow, bow. Peace.